Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Who wants to see a comparison between a 6.2 liter LS3 and a 6.2 liter LT1? Is the LT1 really better? In this video, we're going to compare the Gen 4 all aluminum 6.2 liter LS3. You know, the high water mark of the LS3 engine family. We're going to compare that to the motor that GM used to replace it. Of course, we're talking about the all aluminum 6.2 liter Gen 5 LT1. Now, the LT1 is supposed to make more power, and we're going to compare these two both stock and modified. But the question is, why would the LT1 actually make more power than the LS3? Well, if you take a look, it has more stock compression ratio. It has variable cam timing. It has slightly better head flow, and it has direct injection. It makes more power, but the question is, how much? After running the video on the comparison between the Gen 3 and Gen 4 5.3 liter and the Gen 5 L83 5.3 liter, everyone was up in arms. Yeah, you need to compare the 6.2 liter stuff. How well does the 6.2 liter LS3 Gen 4 motor compare to the 6.2 liter LT1 Gen 5 motor? So here you have it. Here is a comparison from the uh, between the LS, LS3 and the LT1, both in stock and modified trim. Actually, we're going to start out with our stock motors, and we've run both of those on the dyno at West Tech. Now, with the L LS3, we run these the same way that we run everything else. This LS3 was run on the engine dyno with long tube headers. In this case, they, these were inch and seven eighths. It was run with an open throttle body, so no air intake, no mass air meter, nothing else. It was run with a Holly HP management system and an optimized tune, optimized air fuel and optimized timing to make the most power that we could in this RPM range. It's also run fairly cold, about 140 degrees, no accessories, and the exhaust after the header was basically three inch collector extensions and running them with mufflers or not mufflers doesn't make any difference at this power level. It didn't change the power output. Run in this manner our all aluminum LS3 with all of the factory stuff. The only thing we did replace was we replaced the factory drive by wire throttle body with a 92 millimeter manual throttle body because that's the throttle body size that best fits that factory LS3 intake manifold. So factory size throttle body, factory LS3 intake, factory LS3 heads, rockers, push rods, springs, all of that stuff. I take that back. On this particular motor, we did up the spring pressure. We put another set of 26918 Beehive um, comp cam springs because we were going to be doing a bunch of camshafts on this particular motor, but this was this is run with it all stock. So run in that configuration, again, stock short block, all of that stuff. The the LS3 rated originally at 430 or 435 horsepower, made 495 horsepower and 491 foot-pounds of torque. And again, the reason that it makes more than the rated number is because the way that we test it. The way that the factory tests it is with everything stock. Now, they don't test it at the wheels. They test it at the flywheel. So they test it with the full exhaust, including cat stock exhaust manifolds, all of that stuff. They run all of the accessories. They run the full air intake system. They run it at temperature, so 190 or 200 degrees. They run it at a fixed... Um, uh, air temperature, they run it with a factory tune. So all of the stuff, the way that it basically it is when it's in the car, but they do it at the flywheel. So that's why it's rated at a lower number than we get here. It's just the test procedure. And we're looking for a difference anyways when we put a camshaft in these things or anything. So it doesn't really matter what the starting and ending number is. We're kind of looking at the delta. But run in the exact same configuration as this, we also ran an LT1. We did run the LT1 with long tube headers. It was also run with the same style exhaust, long tube headers feeding a three inch exhaust. It was run with the factory ECU, but with an optimized tune. Um, Eric from West Tech handled all the tuning on that. So they were, think they're using HP tuners. So we spent some time playing with the cam timing and all of that. So again, it was not run with the factory tune. It was run with an optimized tune. And it was run on, the, both of these were run on 91 octane. Both of them were run at the same temperature on the same dyno. They weren't run at the same on the same day because obviously we couldn't do that. But this gives you an indication. Uh, obviously, the factory LT1 is rated at more power than the factory LS3 is, and it shows that it does indeed more make more power. And the reason for that is there are a number of things. They have the same displacement. Um, they're both aluminum. The LT1, though, has uh, a little bit more head flow. The LS3 head flows very well, but the LT1 uh, Gen 5 head actually flows a little bit better. The LT1 has variable cam timing where the LS3 does not. So that's why you can see there's a lot, there's a big torque difference down low. I mean, down here at 3200, 
418 foot-pounds versus 484. So the variable cam timing is really making itself known there. Also a little bit more static compression, um, a little bit of head flow. And these two obviously have different intake manifolds too. The LT1 intake manifold works pretty well, but we really don't know how that directly compares to the LS3 manifold, which we know is also a very good intake manifold on that combination. So run in stock trim, and not surprisingly enough, the factory Gen 5, LT1 makes more power than a factory Gen 3 LS3. Now let's find out what happens when we modify them. I've taken a look at the Gen 5 LT1 and the Gen 4 LS3 in stock trim. Obviously we need to look at them in modified trim because we need to figure out like how much power can they make after you make modifications. So for you LS3 guys, get your comments ready and get ready to make them and point at Richard and tell him he doesn't know what he's doing. Unfortunately, I was not able to find an LS3 that had the same number of modifications that were applied to the LT1. So I'm going to do what we can do and show you what was here. But at the end, I'm going to have questions about what you guys think if we would have applied more modifications to the LS3 and how you thought it might turn out. The interesting thing, and in, in this in comparison to the 5.3 liter stuff, is the Gen 3 and Gen 4 5.3 liter, they're a dime of dozen. I mean, they're, they're a little harder to find the aluminum L33s and the LC9s and those kinds of things. But, you know, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 like iron 5.3 liter stuff is like, there's a ton of those out there. But you'll never find an aluminum 6.2 liter, either an LS3, and you, maybe you'll find the, um, these uh, Gen 5 LT1s, but they're harder to come by. So they're both going to be more expensive, relatively speaking, than the 5.3 liter. But let's get into our 6.2 liter stuff. So this was our modified 6.2 liter LS3. Now this thing had a camshaft in it. This was one that I ran with my big intake shootout. So we'll take a look and see. I think that this had the um, 469 camshaft in it. Yes, it had the Comp 469 camshaft in it. It had the 26918 Beehive valve springs. It was a 614, 624 lift, a 231, 247 degree duration, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. It had inch and 7 eighths headers, no mufflers. This one was equipped with the high ram intake manifold because I wanted to show something that actually made more power than the stock um, LS3 intake manifold. This one did have stock LS3 heads, which as we know, are very good and can support more power than we're making here. Here, we made 690 horsepower on a much bigger stroker with the factory LS3 head so that we know that they'll support fairly big power levels. But this was our modified version. This was run with EFI. It was run with the high ram. It was run with two 4150 throttle bodies on a dual quad lid, but with port injection on it. So it had plenty of airflow. This thing made good power. I mean, run with the the high ram in this cam, it made 620 horsepower and 515 foot-pounds of torque. So now let's take a look at our modified, and this is really the reason that I wanted to do the video because I wanted to show you this modified um, LT1 motor that the guys from Brian Tooley did. Here is our modified LT1, and this, again, this was a Gen 5 LT1. It had a much bigger cam. It had a GPI, they called this their high ram cam, so it's a GPI high ram cam. It is a VVT cam. We know that the Gen 5 motor has more static compression than the LS3 does. We also know that on this particular, with as big a cam as we ran, as or the guys from Brian Tooley Racing ran in this um, LT1 motor, that it required piston notching. So they went in and uh, used a cutter to get enough valve relief to run this GPI high ram cam. This thing was also equipped with a high, uh, a high RPM intake like the high ram on the LS3. It was run with the um, Trinity intake from Brian Tooley Racing. So it's that, it's the, um, the three part intake manifold that it had CNC uh, runners and a 105 millimeter throttle body. It had the long tube headers. So basically it had a bigger camshaft and it also had the one thing I forgot to mention, it did have ported heads, which the LS3 did not. These ported heads were a set of GM performance parts, CNC ported LT1 heads. So they're factory ported uh, heads from GM performance parts. So these are our combinations. And if we take a look at the Gen 5 motor, this thing made 670 horsepower. Uh, peak torque was about the same, um, 518 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah, let's see. 
Yeah, 517.2, 517.9, yeah, 518 foot-pounds. It just made power a little bit farther out on um, the short runner intake manifold. And even the variable cam timing didn't um, give it enough down low uh, because the camshaft was a pretty good size. Now, here's a comparison between our modified ones. But here's my question for you guys, for my, all of my LS3 guys, because that's a good motor to start out with. What would happen if we did a couple of things? One, if we milled the LS3 head, obviously, to get the compression up, that would be good. If we put a CNC version of the factory head like we did on the LT1, or even an aftermarket version of the head from Master AFR, or trick flow or one at one of those heads and so if we had a small runner or a small chamber version of one of those cnc heads or a cnc ported stock head um, and then what if we could configure it with variable cam timing do you think that the ls3 with a uh, you know good size notch in the piston so we had additional valve clearance we could run an even bigger cam let me know what you guys think and let me know in the comments of some of you guys out there because i know that you guys have let me know some combinations that you've run on the LS3 stuff where they've made more power than this. Because we know that they can. We know that the head will support it. So let me know your combinations that have made more than this and whether or not you think the Gen 4 LS3 can compete directly head-to-head -head with the Gen 5 LT1. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn in this comparison between the Gen 4 LS3 and the Gen 5 LT1? The first thing we learned, obviously, is that Richard can never do actual apples to apples comparisons, and I have to admit, this is not that. So if you've made it this far in the video, I recognize that fact, and you don't have to be the guy that tells me I didn't make an apples to apples comparison because we obviously recognize that fact. But here's the guy you do want to be. Let me know what kind of combination you guys have run on an LS3. Maybe it had ported heads. Maybe it had valve reliefs. Maybe it had a lot more camshaft. Maybe it had the right intake manifold. And let me know what the combination is and how much power it makes. Basically, I want you to tell me whether or not you think the Gen 4 LS3 is a worthy competitor to the later Gen 5 LT1. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.